Hello everyone, my name is Amar Regeb. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon EC2. We're going to take a look today at how our recently launched G5 and G5 instances featuring NVIDIA GPUs can help with accelerating your graphics-based workloads. We'll take a look at each instance family along with use cases, and then we'll follow up with a graphics and gaming demo on both G5 and on G5G. G5 instances represent a continuation of our graphics platform providing the latest graphics architecture, the NVIDIA Ampere A10G Tensor Core GPU. With the latest graphics APIs, you can get up to 3x better performance. For ML-based workloads, you can get up to 40% better price performance compared to our previous generation G4DN instances with an up to 15% lower cost to train compared to EC2. For mixed compute workloads, AWS provides at no additional cost to the NVIDIA grid and cloud, cloud gaming drivers to tailor your workload for the most optimal performance on the G5 instances with support of the NVIDIA libraries and SDKs. What makes this all possible is in the design of the G5 instances. G5 runs our high-performant, lightweight AWS Nitro hypervisor and the combination of the AMD Epic Roam processor 7R32 plus the NVIDIA A10G GPU, we're exposing the additional memory segment, which will allow us to get further uh, frames per second improvement in gaming workloads. We'll actually see this in our demo uh, later. And we'll also prov we also provide up to 100 gigabit per second networking for content delivery. Our continued innovation with this new instant type translates to improving performance while continuing to drive lower cost. Although generally focusing today on graphics workloads during this talk, uh, it's important to note that G5 fits as part of a selection of instance types to support machine learning workloads, including inference and small model ML training, as well as HPC workloads, including molecular dynamics, computational fluid dynamics, and database analytics. When we talk about graphics workloads, there are three main areas we see customers adopt the G instance family. First, creating remote workstations for end user compute fleet environments so that customers around the world can connect to a common platform and collaborate. Uh, we see customers utilizing rendering workloads, um, which are popular uh, with either doing real time or batch rendering, as well as streaming to client-side VR headsets. Uh, finally, at scale, G5 provides a compelling offering for content delivery and for game streaming. Some example benchmarks below showcase how, with the various graphics APIs utilized, encodes our customers use, the expected frames per second and cost savings can be realized compared to G4DN. Next, we'll take a look at a demo of gaming on the G5 instances. Okay, so let's take a look at our Amazon EC2 G5 instances. Our G5 instances are our latest generation NVIDIA GPU-based instances. Uh, we feature up to eight NVIDIA A10G Tensor Core GPUs with the second generation AMD EPIC uh, processors. With this instance type, um, in this demo, we're actually going to take a look at a game, uh, gaming capabilities and streaming options available on uh, the G5 and go through just some standard setup, setup and optimization as well as running a few benchmarks as well. So to get started, what we've done is we've gone ahead and launched an instance. We have an instance here. Uh, this one's running out of the U.S. West to uh, U.S. Oregon region. The instance type uh, is the G5-8X large, uh, which will have our single A10G GPU with sufficient CPUs and memory for, for our benchmarking and, and workloads. The OS that we're running here is Windows 2022, and that's key for uh, some of the newer graphics APIs that have been released, and we'll take a look at that a bit later when we run some of our benchmarks. The instance... D depending on the workload that you're running, um, AWS offers a few different types of drivers depending on the type of workload that, that you're running. For general, for general, for generalized G 
GPU compute workloads that are either compute and graphics together. You could take a look at our public NVIDIA drivers. Uh, those drivers is the standard data center Tesla drivers you can install, and that's optimized or work for uh, compute-based workloads. AWS provides at no additional cost the uh, NVIDIA grid drivers as well as the NVIDIA gaming drivers. The NVIDIA grid drivers are useful for interactive compute workstations um, for those that require uh, quadro features as well as um, the ability to address 4 by 4 k monitors. That's where the uh, uh, grid drivers are, are, uh, are optimized for. And then finally, there's the NVIDIA gaming drivers, and that's the one we're using in this demo. The NVIDIA gaming driver is released at a much increased cadence for new gaming features, uh, support for new games, uh, increased performance, as well as the ability to address a single 4K uh, uh, desktop. And so in, uh, in this example, we have our instance. Uh, let's go ahead and connect to that instance. Uh, this is our uh, G5 8x large. This is running, again, as I said, Windows Server 2022. What we've done here is uh, the first thing that you want to do is, as I mentioned in the documentation, is select the driver that you want to install. In this case, we've installed the NVIDIA gaming driver. Um, the instructions will have a, uh, a copy and paste PowerShell script that you can just paste into PowerShell. Um, and if you attach the IAM role to download from S3, it will go ahead and download the an NVIDIA driver and uh, it'll be on your, on your desktop here under NVIDIA. We've gone ahead and installed it on our instance. In this case, as, a, as a, at the time of, of, of recording this, it's the April 2022 release, the 512.59 driver. So once we have the uh, driver installed, uh, there's uh, uh, some registry settings as well as uh, a license file that needs to be downloaded. Again, there's no additional cost for that license and it's all available uh, in our public documentation on, on how to import that license and, and get started with, with the gaming driver on uh, the G5 instances. Once that is done, uh, you can actually confirm that the gaming the, the vGaming license is, is, is activated by actually querying the NVIDIA SMI stack. So if we go to NVIDIA SMI and we, and we uh, run the uh, command, here let me pull up a uh, command shell, and uh, Q, and we query the GPU, you'll see here if we scroll up towards the uh, vGPU software license product, you'll see that the product name is set to NVIDIA Cloud Gaming, and it is licensed. And, and again, that, that's, a, that, that's a no extra cost entitlement for the G5 instances, as well as uh, G4DN. So once we have, uh, once we have our underlying um, driver set up, we can then start just like a normal gaming experience, install our games. Uh, in this example, we're using Steam. And so we have uh, Steam and we've installed uh, 3D Mark as well as Red Dead Redemption 2, which we'll take a look at in a few moments. The, if you remember, I pointed out earlier that we installed uh, Windows 2022. That specific branch of, of, of Windows is required because it gives us access to uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate with, uh, well, with 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 the new ray tracing feature that's that's available in DirectX 12 Ultimate. So with 3D Mark, we actually have that ability to utilize DirectX 12, the latest APIs with ray tracing when we use the Windows Server 2002 uh, OS image. So once we start uh, 3D Mark, okay. Once we've loaded up 3D Mark. Uh, we can actually take a look at the benchmarks here uh, with, uh, with uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate and ray tracing. One more thing I did want to point out as well is in Windows Server 2022, uh, one optimization that you can do before running the, the benchmark is to uh, set the graphics GPU scheduler to offload uh, into the, onto the GPU rather than using the CPU. 
So uh, this is a new feature that's available in Windows Server 2022 and above on AWS. So you can reduce latency and improve performance if you select this and trigger it on and then reboot the machine uh, to, to run your, uh, to run your uh, gaming and, and, and benchmarks. So once you set this, um, we'll take a look at the DirectX, uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate Ray Tracing Benchmark. We'll start the benchmark now. And we'll take a look. So this is going to run in full screen. It's going to collect some system info. And then we'll take a look at the results once the benchmark is, is complete. Now that the benchmark is running, I'm going to be quiet so you can immerse yourself in the scene and focus on the high quality graphics performance. Also notice that the numbers displayed at the bottom are the FPS being rendered. So you can see how well the, the GPU is rendering as the scenes get more or less complex. Okay, with that quick test, uh, we could see that we were at 45 frames per second uh, on our uh, A10G GPU uh, with our AMD Epic 7R32. Uh, we were at uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, when we were looking at the uh, the the uh, ray tracing test. Uh, yeah, our frame rates were, were were pretty stable throughout the the entire test. Um, and one thing to point out is that I'm actually connected through this instance using uh, DCV, using our, our DCV product with, with, with AWS. And that's a remote desktop protocol that allows us to, to connect to, to, to our instance. Uh, so with that, let's take a look at some in-gaming um, benchmarks. And here, again, we'll take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, so here we are in our generalized settings. We'll go down to graphics, and then we will take a look at a few of the graphics settings that we have set. Um, so we'll run it at we'll run the benchmark at 1920 by 1080, uh, full screen with uh, VSync turned off, um, and all the other uh, settings are either set to ultra or high where appropriate. I'll call out that NVIDIA DLSS we have set the balanced, and on our advanced graphics we are uh, utilizing the DirectX 12. Uh, API. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark and see what the results look like. Now that the benchmark is running, I'm going to be quiet so you can immerse yourself in the scene and focus on the high quality graphics performance. Also notice that the numbers displayed at the bottom are the FPS being rendered so you can see how well the, the GPU is rendering as the scenes get more or less complex.
had to shoot at some kids picking through the wood pile. No respect. Well, yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay, you can see with our benchmarking that we've reached an average FPS of about 96, minimum of 31, and maximum of 120. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed the demo. If you're interested in getting started with G5 instances, you can go to instance type slash G5 on our AWS Amazon.com product page. Thank you very much. Now we'll take a look at our Amazon EC2 G5G instances. This family uses ARM-based Graviton2 CPUs with NVIDIA T4G Tensor Core GPUs. By coupling ARM with NVIDIA GPUs, we're offering a technical unlock which provides developers an opportunity to create applications in the cloud which has parity to edge and mobile devices. The NVIDIA G GPU and its software and SDK ecosystem is fully supported on ARM. The core fit for the G5G instance family is across game streaming, specifically Android game streaming, as well as parity with on-premises autonomous vehicle, edge compute devices, as well as general graphics rendering, supporting OpenGL and Vulkan graphics APIs. We've created a workflow here that allows customers to take a look at how to decide which uh, instance type across our G families would suit best for their various types of workloads. Uh, we won't necessarily go through each step of the workflows, but some of the key branch points are the type of um, graphics rendering workloads that you want to start with. For example, is it a cloud AR VR use case, transcoding, or content creation? The next major branch point is deciding that your uh, software stack that you'll be using is um, compatible on ARM. Uh, once it's compatible on ARM, uh, the recommendation would be to first take a look at our G5G instances. Um, now, our G5G instances span from the extra large size all the way up to G5G metal. And so it could be possible to tailor and run your workloads across a family of different uh, V, CPU, and memory ratios, as well as number of GPUs, if your application can run on ARM, or if the application of interest uh, can be compiled utilizing ARM. Uh, the next major branch, branch point is looking at um, the amount of GPU memory or if uh, you need multiple GPUs. And that's where you could take a look at um, that's where you could take a look at the uh, G5 instances um, as a uh, continuation and benchmarking compared to G4DN. Or if uh, your workloads can also utilize our AMD GPUs, then you can look at G4AD. So you have a choice uh, in determining which is the best instance type for the workloads uh, that would be compatible with your application of interest. We've heard from our customers so far on uh, various workloads that they've run on both of our G5 and G5G instances. Uh, here are a few examples. Uh, 
one key one is Netflix that uses our G5 instances for high-end graphics workstations, um, where they've seen the, the 3x higher performance compared to their workstations they had on G4DN. Um, the demo that we're actually going to be showcasing for G5G is based off of Nbox Cloud, uh, a, a, our partner Canonical, uh, which provides the Nbox Cloud appliance uh, we have a demo of prototyping uh, Android game streaming using the G5G instances natively on the ARM platform with Ambox Cloud. And finally, also ARM, uh, that's now been able to develop some uh, autonomous vehicle or software-defined vehicle uh, challenges uh, by addressing those challenges uh, in the G5G instances, uh, we're able to provide them with a uh, instance type that has parity to their on-premises uh, uh, autonomous vehicle hardware platforms. Now we'll take a look at a demo of the Android game streaming that I talked about with Anbox Cloud on G5G. Okay, so let's take a look at the G5G instance type. Our partner, Canonical, was an early adopter of G5G with the Anbox Cloud web framework. Anbox Cloud is a scalable virtual device infrastructure for Android applications. With Anbox, you can deliver Android apps at scale with support on the AWS Graviton 2 ARM processor, as well as support for the NVIDIA T4G GPU on G5G. Here we'll showcase the Anbox Cloud running on a G5G Metal instance hosted in the US Oregon region. To get started, after registering your instance with the Ubuntu Advantage program, you can install applications by going to Add Application. Then you give the application a name and then provide a base Android version. In this case, we have Android 12 or Android 10. And then you upload your APK file. There's some further advanced options such as versioning, um, boot packages, and additional tags. Once your application is created, and we actually have two applications that you'll see here, it's the, basically the, the Bomb Squad uh, game, Android game. Once you create an application, you can then choose to create sessions from that application, and these sessions run at a specific um, resolution and frames per second. So with our Bomb Squad stress that we have here, we can go ahead and create a new session, we choose the application that we want to uh, run. We'll choose a screen resolution and, and frames per second. In this case, we'll take a look at 1080p, 30 frames per second. And we can choose either portrait or landscape. We'll do landscape. And then we have some further advanced options like a specific app version, region, or any extra data that we want to pass in, into the container. Once we create a new session, will be dropped immediately into that session as it starts. What essentially happens is it loads up a new independent Android container, installs the Bomb Squad application, and this Bomb Squad application runs in demo mode. So you see here that this is running in a fully autonomous mode. And you can see the, uh, the output of the game being streamed to our browser client here. If we open up the statistics, we could see here uh, the uh, WebRTC framework statistics and networking statistics, such as current round trip time latency. Uh, video, currently we're delivering this at 27 frames per second. Our decode time, as well as our jitter and, and network, uh, network uh, information. So we wanna make sure that we're not dropping any packets. I can see packet losses at zero, but we're st still receiving our full stream of packets, both for the video and audio. Now, where as we run this single stream, we can actually check, uh, so let's go ahead and when we exit the stream, one thing to check is the fact that this stream actually runs in the background. If we actually go ahead and click joining session again, we'll see that we actually picks up where we left off at and this, this whole stream runs in the background. So while this stream is running, let's actually go ahead and drop to a shell on the instance. And if we take a look at a shell on the instance and run NVIDIA SMI, we can see that we have our single Anbox session running. It takes about 526 megabytes of GPU memory, 
and we're running on one of our two T4G GPUs. Remember that on G5G Metal, we have the Graviton ARM processor, uh, as well as uh, two NVIDIA T4G GPUs to choose from. Now, this other GPU is sitting idle, or is not being used. The usefulness here is that with the fact that we're launching the single stream, we can actually we, we actually are consuming very little resources on the GPU, so much so that we can actually go ahead and actually pack multiple streams or multiple sessions per G5G instance. So what we'll do is uh, let's go ahead in the background here, um, go ahead and launch 55 individual sessions. So those sessions will start and run in the background. Um, you can actually start sessions not just in the dashboard that you just saw, but also via the command line. So off screen, I've, I went ahead and started uh, our 55 sessions. So while those sessions are starting, um, we can actually take a look at the uh, performance here of the uh, Bomb Squad application. If we exit the stream and go back to the other streams, we can actually see uh, those being created. Uh, currently, we don't have all streams created yet. They're, they're, they're being created now. Um, but soon, what ends up happening is the session gets created, and then in the background, it will install and load the Bomb Squad application in our independent Android container, and then uh, it'll become in active state. So once it's active, it means that that session has started and will and is starting to deliver, deliver content. Um, so let's just wait a few moments until we start to see more active streams. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and refresh this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there in, 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 into active state. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and just join one of these sessions. And you'll see here that, yes, we have it actually running in the background. Um, we can go to any number of those active sessions and see, let's say on the second page, any one of these active sessions and we'll see independently running in the background. Again, all of these are running in autonomous demo mode, so uh, they would run as if somebody was actually playing play, playing the game. So yeah, so basically this, this essentially shows that we have all 55 active streams running on our G5G Metal instance. What this does is it drives the cost per stream down quite a bit. So with G5G Metal, uh, it's two dollars and seventy-four cents per per hour for the instance. But as a result of of delivering fifty-five streams, we drive that cost down to about five cents per stream per hour, and that becomes very cost-effective for delivering and or gaming at scale. With this. Uh, what we can do is let's go ahead and, buy and drop back to the shell and take a look at uh, what the instance looks like now. So if we look at the shell and we load up NVIDIA SMI again, we can see that we have all 55 streams running um, and it is distributed across both GPUs. And you can see here that we have, um, we're taking up about 10 gigabytes of, of GPU memory per GPU. There's probably a little bit of overhead to, to load up even a few more streams. Um, our GPU utilization is sitting around 50% as we deliver these games, so there's probably some headroom to actually include a few more, a few more streams per GPU um, if you wanted to further drive costs down. But uh, essentially, yeah, you can see here that we have, we have really uh, um, utilized our, our GPU efficiently for, for delivering this content. If we go back to our uh, Ambox Cloud environment, and if we join one of these streams, we can load up the statistics again, and you'll see that uh, for each of these streams, we're delivering them at 30 frames per second. And again, we still have no packet loss on the video or audio side of the, of the stream. And any one of these we can actually uh, check any one of these streams we can actually check and see from a statistics perspective that as we as we receive packets we we're, we're not dropping any from the audio and video and all of them are being streamed at 30 frames per second
so if you're interested in learning more about Anbox Cloud, you can go to anbox-cloud.io to learn more about Anbox Cloud and getting started with it on, on AWS. Um, also, to get started on G5G, you can go to Amazon EC2, uh, EC2 instance types, uh, G5G. Thank you very much. Okay, now we'll revisit some key takeaways from today's session. Uh, first, about the G5 instances featuring the NVIDIA A10G Tensor Core GPUs, which deliver up to uh, 3x better performance for graphics-based graphics workloads and up to 40% better price performance compared to our previous generation G4DN instances. Uh, some key graphics use cases include remote workstations, rendering, game streaming, and 3D model creation. Also, we took a look at the G5G instances, which are powered by our ARM-based Graviton2 CPUs and provide our NVIDIA T4G Tensor Core GPUs, which deliver up to 30% lower cost for graphics rendering when compared to Amazon EC2 G4D instances, with use cases in um, rendering, game streaming, as well as uh, device parity between edge to cloud for uh, ARM-based workloads. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Um, to get started, you can learn more about G5 instances, the links below, as well as G5G. Thank you so much.